This week on the Ritual Misery podcast, I'm dadding as fuck. Uh, and I'm briefing as fuck. Yeah, well, I prepped for a holiday party. Uh, are there going to be zombies there? There might be, but if there are, I'll definitely double tap them. Welcome to the Rich. Uh, uh, wait, uh, hello, and welcome to the Rich Wizard Podcast, episode 232 for Thursday, the 24th of October, 2019. This is a show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos. That's Kent. We don't have a guest this week, so. I mean. Hi. It, it, yeah. <laughs> it is what it is. is, is it, it, uh, wait, that didn't work either. Hey, man, how you been, dude? It's been a crazy week. Oh, it's, uh, yeah, it's been stupid crazy. Um, one of the things that I actually like about my job is is when I give briefings. Which oh. Briefings are like, uh, you know, like presentations. Right. And um, <laughs> For those so, in the audience that don't know what a briefing is. <laughs> right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but it, it, I don't know. It, 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 I think I've had enough of it this week. <laughs> like all I've done. <laughs> Today especially. It's that literally all day long from... From the time I got to work to the time that I left, it was nothing but giving briefings. And um, it's a nice break from Outlook. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but other than that, man, I, I yeah, <laughs> it's a lot. I don't mind giving you briefings as long as it's not too repetitive. Like giving the same briefing twice is fine, but any more than that really pisses me off. And it has to be one that I prepared myself, which adds to the anguish because I don't like preparing briefings, but I yeah. sure as hell don't like giving other people's briefings. Right. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Exactly. Yep. Well, the briefings that I gave today were a bit repetitive, uh, but it was a different different audience each time, so I had to give it in a different style, but it was a briefing that I wrote myself. So, so not, not just different audience, but different like type of audience, like category of audience. Uh, Kind of, yeah. So, yeah. So like... Officers here, enlisted there, pilots here, that kind of thing? Uh, not exactly that, but it was like uh, so, someone who this was new material for, and then it was a group oh. of folks that was receiving a refresher and a top-up. And then, um, well, the third briefing was was pretty much the same, but it was a different audience. It was more, um, I was briefing uh, boss type versus worker B. Gotcha. And so it's a different perspective. A little, little higher level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, either way, it's stupid. Um, yeah. <laughs> I've gotten like almost, like I've gotten, I want to say zero, but that'd be an exaggeration. I've gotten minimal sleep this week for a couple reasons. Mm. One is my recap for the week, and the other one is my geeky thing of the week, and I'll get to them in that order. Oh, okay. Well, let's start with your recap. Yeah, re well, I, that's what I said. Uh, the recap of the week is going to be that we've been... Decorating the house for Halloween. Now, two years ago, we threw on a neighborhood Halloween party, and we started prepping on Wednesday, as in we bought stuff on Wednesday. We decorated Thursday and Friday, and the party was on Friday. This week, we or this year, we started last Thursday, as in a week ago, and we're still prepping now in minimal improvement over what the house looked like a couple years ago, just different ideas. But we tried to start early and it's only made it to where now we have more time, so more preparation and more things going on. And that means less sleep because we're staying up late to get shit done. Mm, yeah. That's going to be me tomorrow probably because we have a, a Halloween party on Saturday that we're throwing and uh, we were being proactive. Same as you mm. uh, starting early to get things prepped mm -hmm. and um, we're no closer to being ready <laughs> now. <laughs> Then, then, you, then you would have been if you'd started today. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, I can't, I mean, we are way more prepared, but it's just a different, like we're trying different things and everything else and it's all complicated. So, mm -hmm. um, uh, but uh, the important part, the jello shots are done because that was one of my jobs. Jello, oh. jello shots are done. Yeah, uh, people are bringing the jello shots to mind. So uh, well, check that box. <laughs> I, I I couldn't do that because uh, I made a batch with um, a new recipe. It's uh, so you got half water, right? The hot water to dissolve the jello itself, and then the, it's supposed to be either half vodka or well, quarter vodka, quarter water, or half vodka, depending on how strong you want it to be. But I found a new recipe that was half uh, water, you know, the hot water, and then a quarter vodka and a quarter 
of peach schnapps. Oh, it okay. really livens up the fruitiness of it and and tones down a lot of the alcohol, but it still maintains about a twelve percent potency. Mm. And yeah, it, they're they're delicious. Uh, of course they are. But holy shit, they're strong. Um, mm. And then I made another batch, and the second batch is half water, mm. uh-huh. half soju. Oh God! And they're ten percent. And you probably can't taste any alcohol. Oh, you can, but not very strong. Like it, yeah. Uh, everybody in the house can taste it. I couldn't. So soju, that's the the um, Korean liquor. Um, yeah. Korean, uh, Korean version of sake, which is the Japanese version of uh, vodka, which is the Russian version of rubbing alcohol. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. See, and that's that's the thing I was going to say about soju. If you drink that shit straight, yeah, it is like rubbing alcohol. It is fucking insanely alcoholic tasting. Yeah. It might but as well be ever with a, You mix it with an eyedropper, an eye drop of literally anything sweet, the alcohol flavor disappears. Yeah. Which makes it, it exceptionally dangerous. dangerous. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I've got these six uh, 1,800 milliliter combat bottles of soju under my thing. And I was like, you know what? Oh, well, I had seven. Now I've got six. And I was like, you know what? I might as well use one of those. They're just sitting there not being used. So let me let me try that with some jello shots. And holy shit, they're delicious. Right. Uh, might be a little more potent than some people like, but they are right up my alley. Um, the other thing I've been doing this week is... Last week, last last like Tuesday, my niece got sick. She had a, she ran a fever. She had the the twenty four hour bug. You know, no big deal, right? Yeah. Um, this coincided with my wife being sick. Mm. Those two started feeling better. Autumn got sick. Our six year old. Mm. Okay, cool. Autumn was sick Thursday and Friday. She was out of school, and then came along the weekend, and Autumn felt better. And Evelyn Sunday Sunday she got sick, started throwing up, like full fledged flu kind of thing. She was out Monday and Tuesday. She went back to school or daycare on Wednesday. And today's Thursday. Autumn came home early because she was running 101 one degree fever or whatever. Oh. Oh. So now she's just starting the second round. And yeah, so far, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I'm not going to take credit because my wife was awesome. She's been taking care of the kids a lot and the, everything else. But I've been like super dadding because between sick babies and medication, all that shit, I've been handling all that. And it's, it's been fun. Like that's my geeky thing of the week. It's been fun uh, being the dad that can take care of shit and I can be home so I can go get my daughter, that kind of stuff. Really cool. But holy shit, I know it's coming. So you're, you're geeking out on being a dad. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I know it's coming for me. Yeah. 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 Because that's how that works. It, you, you, one, a, a kid gets, gets sick a little bit and you're okay. A double rounder from two kids and everyone in the house is eventually going to get it. Like, that's just, it's not avoidable. Yeah, science. Yeah. <laughs> well, science-ish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Just don't turn into a zombie. Uh, well, yesterday was my zombie day. Wednesdays are my day to sit back, chill out, and not work. And I ended up working the entire day and, oh. and oh. not being able to enjoy my front porch the way I like to on Wednesdays. So front oh, porches are great. Yeah, especially the way I enjoy them. Um <laughs> in your underwear yelling at children. Smoking a doobie. Yes. Yeah. yeah that's exactly how I enjoy my Wednesdays. <laughs> that's that's retirement goals. Hashtag retirement goals. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um so yeah, that that's that was my week uh, in a nutshell, man. Uh but apparently you went and saw Zombie Land double tap and it was thumbs up or thumbs down. Thumbs up. Good. I, I recommend if you liked Zombieland, the original one from like yeah. fucking what nine years ago or whatever. Is is that the one where they they killed Bill Murray? Yes. Yeah. Oh God, I just watched that maybe a year and a half ago with Sterling. We stayed up late and or maybe it was Madison. We stayed up late and watched it. We were laughing the entire time. It's such a good stupid oh. movie. Then then you will enjoy Zombieland Double Tap. It is very much the sequel to that movie. Like it's it's great. Is it all like, the same players? Yep, all the same actors. Oh, yeah, that's, it's it's really good. Except for Bill Murray. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, <laughs> if he, if, if, what would be funny is he popped up in the first one dressed as a zombie, and then they almost shot him. 
then at the towards the end he, he he doesn't he doesn't survive his character does not survive the movie and he's playing himself so i can i can you know and then if he showed up in the second one as an actual zombie from when he didn't survive the first time that would be i would probably piss myself so don't <laughs> spoil that for me but yeah that was that <laughs> i i thoroughly love that fucking movie god i love that movie that was that was a good movie it's not yeah, what i can the- quote all day but man i really enjoyed watching it yeah, then definitely, definitely see uh, Zombieland Double Tap. It's it's uh, Zom- very good. Zombieland was the type of movie for me where I'm tired of zombie movies. I'm tired of vampire movies and all the other shit. Like I'm tired of the undead movies. Well, it was it, exactly the movie I needed as a person tired of that genre of movie because it didn't take itself seriously. It, right, and and it's funny that you say that because one of the one of the things uh, discussed early in the movie is how crappy and unrealistic zombie fiction is uh it shows um um oh shit what's his name what's the main character's name anyway yeah he um y- you see him reading a walking dead comic book and he's like <laughs> oh jeez it's so unrealistic <laughs> i i really enjoyed because it was meta like it it discussed itself without being without like breaking the fourth wall you know like it, it didn't it didn't jump out at you like, hey, we know this is a movie, ha, ha, ha. But it definitely right. knew that it was its own movie. It's self-aware. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Like it, it, So, yeah, that was, that was good. I, I'm, this, I will definitely, oh, this will probably be a red box for me, but I'll definitely check it out. Yeah. Um, I, I'm wondering how much money it made this week, though. Um, well, I mean, there's, there's a way we could possibly find out. Oh. Oh, is there? Yeah, let's, let's do that. Ah, it is scratched. <laughs> you broke it. Uh, the app so, made, uh, yeah. We are part of the stream team movie draft, which has two divisions this year. We've got the red division and the blue division. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are in the blue division. So let's see how that went. Turns out the geek grills. Welcome to your Blue League Movie Draft Minute, presented by DiamondClub.tv. For the week of October 21st, 2019, I'm your host, Big Voice J. Apparently, you can't dip your pet in chocolate. All I wanted was a kitty cat bar. Let's go to the scoreboard! Teams have a drink, RMP, and Gelf are all tied for last place. Still waiting for the first film. Team Snowshoes in third place with $2.2 million. Team Geek Girls gets $32 million from Zombieland 2 Double Tap and second place. And in first place, thanks to $43 million from Maleficent 2, Mistress of Evil, it's Team DKG with $296.9 million. That's your Stream Team Movie Draft Minute. For up-to-date listings, follow Stream Team Draft on Twitter. So thank you, Big Voice J. Um, unfortunately, lately, the uh, box office mojo... Uh, uh, data set which is where we pull the the numbers mm-hmm. for domestic growth um hasn't been cooperating because mm-hmm. imdb pro has um basically usurped some of the functionality of box office mojo so some of the numbers have been migrated to different locations and the sheet had to be remade and all that kind of stuff yeah so when big voice j read the standings, he had us at zero dollars, which is funny because we had money last week. Right. Um, it's because it's because for whatever reason, Jexy was not reporting the numbers correctly when he pulled the numbers. Uh, so we actually have six million dollars right now that we got from Jexy, which is fucking nothing. But <laughs> it does put us in third place out of six teams. Um. Oh boy! Uh, my daughter went to see uh, Maleficent two today, mm. and she said it was rock star awesome. Nice. Which, uh, I think she really enjoyed the first one. Yeah, I mean, if you did, who, who didn't enjoy the first one? I haven't seen it. So oh I my can't... god! You okay? So I, I'm going to compel you to do so, not because I'm ordering you to, but because I'm going to give you a reason to. You ready? Okay, let's do it. Maleficent 2 has Angelina Jolie playing opposite Michelle Pfeiffer. So um, rewind about 25 years ago, and you could probably, I could name calluses on my hands after each of them. 
<laughs> I don't think it'd take 25 years. Um, so you, you, you definitely want to watch that one, but you're not going to get the full stakes unless you watch the first one. So you need to watch Maleficent 1 so that okay. you could fully enjoy Maleficent 2. And Maleficent 1, in and of itself, was an amazing fucking movie. It was really okay. good. And is this a, is this like anti hero? Like, is it because Maleficent's a villain, a it, Disney villain? She and this is from her point of view. Mm. So, uh, well, the first one is anyway. So it is it is anti villain. But so yeah, it's so like Walter White or Dexter, where you've got a, a bad person, but let's make the character sympathetic. Show it from their point of view, right? Okay. Right. That's how the first one was. I have no idea. I can't testify to the second one, of course. But okay. yeah, in in I'm not going to say that Maleficent ends up the hero of the first one, but you definitely sympathize with her. Not just empathize, but sympathize with her and, and, and the storyline. And is it a, a prequel to um uh, what is it? Sleeping, Sleeping Beauty. Sleeping Beauty. Um yeah. No, it's uh w- w- I guess it'd be Antiquel. Because it starts so, before and then continues after. Okay, so it's like a parallel story then. Right, but it ex- expands beyond it and doesn't really discuss the 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 Sleeping Beauty's storyline per se. It kind of goes around it and right, I, I wouldn't say it avoids it, but it, it definitely diff- completely different perspective on the entire exchange. Got it. It, it gives you enough to know that that, that it is concurrent. That oh oh yeah, it, it, there's it. it's not there's no doubt about that. It's just from Leftson's point of view. Okay. And it starts well, actually, way well, before and ends way after. And this Maleficent 2 is the direct sequel to it. Um, of course, Michelle Pfeiffer plays the, I don't want to call her the good witch because I don't know, but she's the the queen, um, you know, the the anti-Maleficent character, the anti-hero, I, I'm guessing, since Maleficent's still in the title. Um, yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm going to, yeah, I'm definitely going to seek this out. Um yeah, and uh, and talk to me afterwards. There's definitely a way for you to watch it at your convenience without. Okay, got it. Yeah, because I was just checking Just Watch, and uh, it is streaming for free on Fubo TV. I'm not sure if I have that app, but it's, no. if it's streaming for free. I may uh, may grab that. There's there 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 are ways. Of course, there's always ways. <laughs> um, so <laughs> one more comment about the the movie draft, mm-hmm. right? So we're not doing so hot right now because Jexy is the only thing that that we've got. Um, I expressed worry or concern last week about DKG's numbers because of Joker and um, the slate that they still have yeah. remaining. Um, th- uh, just real quick. So outside of Joker, so speaking of Maleficent, they have that as well. Mm-hmm. They have Ford v. Ferrari, uh, 21 Bridges, Queen and Slim, and Bad Boys for Life. So mm-hmm. uh, I was a little bit concerned until... Well, well past- ho- hold on, hold on, because... Let's go down that list a little bit here, because they are they we we both assume that they are the, our primary competitor in this movie draft. Yes, go yes. down the they're movies one at, more time. Basically, they're basically at three hundred million dollars right now. Right, um, with so, the, the two movies that they've had come out, Joker so and Maleficent. Yes, Joker has earned two hundred fifty three, basically two hundred fifty four million dollars, and Maleficent is sitting at. A uh, solid forty-three million dollars. Now I'm so I'm gonna of almost three hundred million dollars for them. I'm going to let me see if I can find it. Or my little sheet that I, so I want to see what how they're projecting versus us. We're gonna get a little behind the curtain here. Okay, so to to recap our slate though, I already said that we have Jexy, which is the the movie about basically a it's basically if Black Mirror made a comedy. Uh, that's right. what this would be. Jexy is like Siri. Um. Uh, it has only made six million dollars, and it's been in the theater for a couple of weeks. I doubt this thing breaks ten million. Our next movie is Bombshell, which um, mm, I, it, interesting premise. Um, which but, one is so, Bombshell? Remind me of that. Um, Bombshell. Hold on, let me make sure that I'm right on this. I think Bombshell is the. Um, uh, the one where with the reporters that uh, were working at Fox News. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, that is the one. So it's got Margot Robbie, it's got Charlize Theron, 
Um, uh, shoot, who else is in this thing? Uh, Nicole Kidman. That that, uh, that that's yeah, that's the one that has it's got potential for a niche market to really hit big. Absolutely, the, that that middle aged. Um, I'd, I'd say the middle aged uh, white woman market is perfect demographic for that show. Yeah, so and it, it, in particular, pot- political junkies that are really into it. But right, right, exactly, because especially because of the trailer, the the the. Uh, the oh my god moment of the trailer was revealing that it was in at the Fox News studios. Um, so it's going to be, I don't know, it's going to be interesting to see where they go with it, but I, I think it'll be good, but I don't think it's going to make a lot of money. I, I think right. we're looking at like 20 million or something, like not a lot. Right. Um, but <laughs> um, we've got an ace up our sleeves and um, I think that um well i'll get to that in a second i'll get to that in a second let's look at dkg again really quick i I still can't find the fucking spreadsheet where did i share it with you um i I wanted to take it behind the curtain but i'm actually just fucking deriving the show you actually put it in a dropbox or email might have been an email Mm. um but anyway so all right so joker has already made almost 300 million dollars it's still got legs that movie's only been out for a couple of weeks at this point yeah not october 4th it's but, uh, but i mean it's peak though it's 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 yeah it's it's probably hit its peak i mean it's not going to make a billion dollars it's but it's still being discussed people are still talking about this movie i'm still talking about that movie and i saw it i think i saw it opening weekend right yeah i had to have. yeah i saw it opening weekend um really well done film and uh it's got legs so it's definitely going to break 300 million that's i'm actually that's probably about my projection 300 million dollars or 320 million something like that mm-hmm. maleficent uh just came out on the 18th of october and it's at 43 million dollars we're looking at probably oof 60 70 million dollars mm-hmm. maybe more it could probably go higher than that even um, let's see, Maleficent, where is that at? Uh, we projected it for 127. Okay, okay, so, uh, yeah. You know in what? in Joker, we, pro- we projected Joker for 210. And it's far exceeded that. It, it has, it's, it's overperformed, that's fine. Sure, sure. Uh, Ford v. Ferrari, uh, it's, eh, it's gonna do, I mean, it's gonna do all right. It's got Matt Damon, it's, you know, it's gonna do okay. Uh, 21 Bridges, I don't see doing a lot of money. Uh, Queen and Slim, same thing. Uh, those were bargain buys for DKG. Yeah. And then their next big one is is Bad Boys for Life. So Bad Boys Part 3, that thing's going to do well. It's going to pull over $100 million. We, we have it projected for 120 Yeah. Um, so we're yeah. looking at a total of... What what do we think? Six hundred and something million dollars for uh, DKG's total. Yeah, Maleficent. If it really if it really catches hold this weekend, I can see it doing a little bit better. So maybe six fifty, seven hundred. All right. I mean, that's kind of a high estimate, but I mean, Joker did hit pretty good. So sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If if they have one more thing overperform, uh, they're they're going to be approaching seven hundred million seven hundred million dollars. Yeah. Um, but so Jexy, we've made six hundred or six million dollars so far. What what are we looking to get from that movie? What what was our initial projection? Uh, twenty nine. <sighs> We're not getting that. No, um, no, it's it, But we it, only we it, only uh, spent seven dollars on it, so. Yeah. Yeah. I, don't, I mean, but if, I don't... if it makes seventy million, we 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 we've hit peak. And how much has it made so far? Six million. <laughs> okay. Gonna, All right. So yeah, we're. I'd be surprised if it broke ten million dollars. So we're we're sitting on on pennies on the dollar of, of from what we expected. Okay. Yeah, and bombshell is not going to do super big numbers either. Um, however, our third and final movie, bombshell, bombshell, we projected for thirty eight. Yeah. So I mean, I'd be happy if it did that. I think yeah. that would be money well spent. Yeah. Um, but our third and final film, I am highly encouraged about. I was very optimistic about that movie to start with, but I'm super duper optimistic now because tickets went on sale for it. 
and yeah, pre-sale it, tickets. Yeah, and it broke the record for the series. Uh, yeah, well, for the for the for movie history, for the oh. highest grossing pre-sale of all time on day one. It yeah. broke the game's record. And of course, we're talking about Star Wars Rise of Skywalker. Yeah. Uh, man, it's the final movie, the saga. It's going to do some numbers. I'll talk more about that. They, they did actually say this is the last Skywalker movie. Like somewhere, one of the press releases, that's what they said. Somewhere, maybe Twitter or something like that. This is the final Skywalker movie. Like yep. the Skywalker saga is ending. Yeah, and I, I've got I've got words about that. But before we before we do that, if if people want to hear words from us that they don't get to hear on the podcast that's released, mm-hmm. uh, the, the VOD that goes on to YouTube. Mm-hmm. They want more words from us. Is there a way that they could get that? Well, they can sit outside the Lowe's in Alamogordo, New Mexico and wait for you to stop by. <laughs> that, that'd be one way. Yeah. Uh, you'd, you'd be waiting a long time for not a lot of payoff. Well, I mean, if you wanted to wait outside the Lowe's at the Wasilla store and wait for me to stop by, you'd have a much better chance because I'm constantly going there. I go there probably once a week. Right, but you'll probably walk past them real quick and maybe like, you know, you're in a hurry, you have a list, you know, so yeah. there's not a whole lot of time to, to chat. Right. Um, so there's got to be another way where people can get more more conversation, more jokes. Oh, um, I mean, do they have to be funny? I mean, sometimes they are, but they don't have to be. <laughs> what, what if they're meta funny, as in you laugh at the people making the jokes because they're funny, but the joke isn't? <laughs> there, there's that. Uh, there's also times when we have uh, wonderful guests on the show like Tay Allen that provides more funnies in the pre-show and the post-show than, than during the the already amazingly funny uh, primary show. That, see, I'm glad you finally got specific because that would be patreon.com slash virtual misery. Yes. Show us that you give a fuck by giving us a buck over at patreon.com slash virtual misery. Get all kinds of extras, pre-shows, post-shows, exclusive interviews. Uh, you never know what's what's going to show up in there. It's do we, a neither do we. <laughs> <laughs> That is accurate. That is the most accurate thing said so far during this podcast. Give us a yeah. slash ritual misery. Give us a bucko, fucko. <laughs> All right. So tonight we want to talk about Star Wars. <clears throat> uh, but before we do that. Not before, but I want to talk about Star Wars. Yeah, we'll get to that. But, I want to put you I want to put you through the ringer first. I want to find <sighs> out if you're gonna get the D tonight. Oh, let's I guess we can do that. Can I please have your attention? In the last 30 minutes, kid's done something. Now you've got a guess. He was very excited. Kids games. Play with him. Play with him. Play with him. Your game this week is called Obviously Not. <laughs> obviously not. What's the real obviously, game? Yeah, obviously not. <laughs> so I'm just gonna ask you some questions and you're gonna answer them. They are not true, false. They are not this or that. They are not multiple choice. You've got to know the answer. And all of these questions sound pretty damn obvious. <laughs> Let's see how you do. <laughs> all right, Amos. Hey, your you, first question. Do you have a Costco where you are? No. Oh. It's about um, probably about an hour in 15 minutes away from me. I think it's the closest one. Costco. Has Korean style bulgogi. Is it good? It's fucking delicious. Oh man, I miss bulgogi. You 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 throw it in a wok or a, a round bowl or whatever, and you just sit there and cook it and just stir it every <clears> once in a while, and pull that shit out, throw it over some rice, and have at it, dude. It is goddamn well. For my flavor, you throw a little chili powder on there. Sure, sure. Some, but n- some not to pepper. be confused with kegogi. No, 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 no. Definitely not kegogi. No, you and I both have kegogi in the house and we don't eat it. <laughs> it's living kegogi. <laughs> Is it still kegogi if it's still alive? I don't know. No, I don't think so. <laughs> it's like, I don't think, I don't think, uh, if you had a pet pig, I don't think it's technically pork. Well, it's fine, but it's not pork. Do you, do you know how the, do you know how the names came out? Like beef, pork, all that stuff? Like how they, how it came around? 
Uh, not really. Oh, there's so, just so, like any other word where people just said, you know what? <laughs> I'm calling that beef. <laughs> no, no. It's actually a remnant from the elite class in England who didn't want to eat cow, so they wanted to eat beef. Okay. Peasants eat cow. Nobles eat beef. Right, right. Peasants right, okay. eat their pigs. Nobles eat pork. Right. I don't eat filthy pigs. Are right. No, 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 no. This isn't a pig. This is pork. So that's that's how those names came around like that. That sounds right. Yeah. All right, anyway. well, let's see how smart you are with, with these subjects. No, 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 no. I just spit all my smarts out. That was it. <laughs> well, okay, so you're fucked. <laughs> or not. I don't know. You might not get the D on this one. All right. What color are aircraft black boxes? Orange. All right. All right. You're doing well so far. All right. <laughs> You would think an aircraft black box would be, in fact, black. That makes it hard to find. Right. So so maybe I'm giving you false hope here because I did know that you are an aircraft maintainer. Uh, yeah. Probably. Uh, so an aircraft black uh, box. Although, do F-16s flight. have black boxes? Um, I guess yeah, they do. Well, I mean, there's a, I mean every, every U.S. aircraft, anyway, has a flight recorder. Right. Which is what a black box, quote, but, black box is. But, but is it a reinforced box? Like digital recorder because the ones I've seen are always just the tapes that they eject and they take inside and oh, somebody no, no, does no. some shit. With. It's good. No, 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 no. It it does in fact have a, a flight recorder which has the you know your standard data you know location um, right GPS coordinates and, air, and air speed, yeah velocity uh, all the, all the avionics shit the fucking pointy head box right yeah 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 the, I mean it's not gonna have like any of the uh, you know weapons data or or but uh, will it have will it have if codes. Uh, uh, probably. I don't know. That'd, that'd be interesting. Well, because so it it when you say if uh, IFF uh, identify friend or foe, right? Mode four. Right? So yeah, mode four, mode four, uh, mode three, mode two, mode one, depending on whether right. Flying. So it's, it, that's basically like the the uh, beacon identifier of an aircraft, saying, "Hey, I'm so and so." Like, here's my type of aircraft. Here's my country of origin. That kind of thing. Yep. Um. It's all yeah, highly it, encrypted shit. It's not none of it's secret, but the encryption is fucking like, like eat it and shit it out, then burn it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I'm That's I'm pretty stupid. sure fighter aircraft have the the data flight data recorder. I'm just saying that I've never seen an Air Force black box. Like hmm. I've seen the flight data recorder and this and that, but it's never been like a reinforced steel black box like you see on 747 crashes and shit. I don't know. I I mean, but I've never been at the site of a fighter jet crash either so i guess yeah, that probably has and, something to do with it and god willing i never will either <sighs> yeah no, that's so um okay right, so, so continue with the questions <laughs> all right in which u.s state mm-hmm. was tennessee williams born it seems too obvious to say tennessee so i'm going to go with kentucky <laughs> Uh, you were correct to say that it wasn't Tennessee. It's in fact Mississippi. I mean, that makes sense. Yeah. But they don't know geography. Right. <laughs> yeah. Tennessee Williams, obviously not born in Tennessee. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Your next one. How S- long send your you... hate mail to <laughs> podcast. How long, every is New How long is New Zealand's 90 mile beach? How long is New Zealand's 90 mile beach? I don't know that New Zealand has 90 miles of beach. It's such a small fucking island. Or is a chain it? of islands, really. Okay. No, because circumference is really fucking big. We just had to do some math last week. Like, <laughs> this one design we have is a pinnacle, an inverted pinnacle, um, which is a pentagram, which is a five, five pointed star. Uh, wrapped in a circle, which makes it a pinnacle, and then the inverted one because that's like the devil sign or whatever, with a with a baby zombie in the middle of it, like at the bottom of the stairs. So when you go go to go downstairs where the bar is, there's a, a inverted pinnacle with a dead baby like on the ceiling. Um, and I had to do the, do all the that's probably the geekiest thing I fucking did this week. But I had to do all the math and shit like that to figure out where to place like 72 degrees from here and then do the, the, the drawings and all that shit to make the stars perfect because my OCD wouldn't let me just have some random fucking star up there and then calculate that against the uh, 
the length of the cables that we were, or the length of the light strings we're using to light it up. And anyway, that was a bunch of shit. Um, what was the question? <laughs> I was about to say you're stalling. <laughs> How long is New Zealand's 90-mile beach? Oh, that's why, because it was a 30-inch circle, but it was actually like 180 <laughs> inches around to go around the circle. Um, New Zealand's 90-mile beach is 84 miles. 55 miles. I would have given it to you if you were within 10, but you weren't. What is the main ingredient of Bombay duck? Chicken. It is, in fact, fish. Fish is the main ingredient of Bombay duck. Chicken, fish, it's about the same. Where did the Spanish flu originate? The Spanish flu originated... Hmm. Spanish flu originated in Italy. The good old USA. Oh, that well. Obviously, sc- right? Scourge upon the world. That's just one of the many. In which month does Russia celebrate October Revolution? January? <laughs> Uh, November, obviously. (laughs) October Revolution celebrated in November. All right, which country was, or actually, let me let me correct the grammar on this one. In which country was the Caesar salad invented? Oh, America. Be more specific. The United States of America. It's probably Canada, isn't it? Fuck Canada. <laughs> Mexico, actually. Yeah, that makes no sense. Yeah. You can't keep <laughs> lettuce in Mexico. This too got them hot. The shit wilts in like a day and a half. <laughs> Whatever. Eat fresh. <laughs> uh, let's see. What nationality was Cleopatra? Who, by the way, was the queen of Egypt. Right. What, what? was her nationality? Greek? I would think she'd be Egyptian, but apparently not. Oh, nice. <laughs> she was definitely Greek. I just went off the name. Like uh, Cleopatra sounds like something the Greeks would come up with. <laughs> all right. They make all kinds of cool shit. Cleopatra is one of my favorite names. How long did the 100 Years War last? Oh, God damn it. I know this one. It was like... It was, uh, uh, um, the Hundred Years' War only lasted like 71 years or something like that? Mm. Or was it like the one that would last 104 <laughs> years? I don't remember. Shit. It's 116 years. Yeah. So right. 74 is only 26 off. That rounds up to... Six, but shut up. Next question. That's fuzzy math. Um, <laughs> G-Dub! G-Dub! <laughs> In which country are Panama hats made? Mexico? <laughs> Colombia. Chile. Ecuador. I would have gotten it eventually. <laughs> eventually, yes. <laughs> Man, you didn't get the D. <laughs> no. How many did I get right? Like two? You got F for fucked. <laughs> okay. Two out of ten. Yeah. 20%. That sounds about right. That was, that was a good quiz. I like that. That was pretty good. Yeah, obviously not. Uh, (laughs) Did I get the D? Obviously not. (laughs) Correct. You got that right. (laughs) Now remember to paste your your reference in the show notes so I can actually uh, put it out there and other people can not get the D. Yeah, did I I not do that? I don't know. Fuck. I mean... Uh, yeah. All right. So whatever I'm so, posting the shit on Friday now, like I'm actually caught up and up to speed and up to date and shit. I do all the editing on Thursday night after the show and then I schedule it for Friday and it just magically appears just after the little Twitch moratorium is over. Is it a moratorium? It's not a moratorium. I don't think so. But if you didn't know better, you would think I was high tonight because I just can't shut up. 
<laughs> so I didn't we were take my about, meds today. That's the problem. Gotcha. We were talking about Star Wars. Yes. And how Rise of Rise of Skywalker is the final film in the forty what 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 were we at? Forty two year like forty two and a half year Skywalker saga. Now I have to ask you a question. A series of questions. Okay. When is it released? December 20th, 2019. When will you be watching it? December 20th, 2019. <laughs> you suck. I will be watching it on December 19th. Mm. Because it releases at midnight going into December 20th on the East Coast. So that means it will release about 8 o'clock here on, in yeah. Alaska. Well, do you have tickets in hand? No, but there's not enough people in Alaska to kill all the t- the available seats in Alaska. Right. Yeah. So I don't I don't have tickets in hand yet because uh, you can't reserve. Band- <laughs> Bandago. Yeah. Well, no, I can reserve now, which oh. was one of the the most epic developments of 2019 here in Alamogordo. <laughs> um, Alamogordo, res- welcome to 2014. Um, yeah, so brand new, uh, well, I say brand new capability is like, I don't know, maybe three months old at this point. So mm-hmm. it's pretty new, which takes a big, uh, uh, just, uh, burden off of my shoulders. Like I get anxiety when it comes to big movie releases, Star Wars in particular, but it still applies to like Avengers movies. Mm-hmm. Um, but so big releases, but Star Wars in particular, I get anxiety when I have to like rush to uh, the fucking theater at the earliest possible point on the day that the movie is coming out and then try to figure out what the best time to appear at the theater so that I can, I don't want to stand there for fucking hours on fucking in, but also I don't want seats that are like front row in the corner. Like I want good seats. So like you have to like, well, all that stress is gone now because I can reserve seats online with an app like people around the country have been able to do for like a fucking decade or more now. <laughs> um, so finally I had that capability. So as soon as the tickets go on sale here, I will have them in hand, but they only, they, they don't go outside of the current month for, or I think it's, it's current month. And then maybe like 30 you know, days ahead of time, or whatever. So something like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's, yeah, tickets are not on sale here yet, but I guarantee I will know when they go on sale and I will be the first person to (laughs) make an online purchase for a row of seats. Now, are you going to watch one time? Will you be watching several times? 2D, 3D, do you sit up front? Do you sit in the middle? Do you sit in the back? Popcorn, no popcorn. What, What is your Star Wars premiere experience going to be like? Okay, so first question was, how many times am I going to see it? Well, that depends on the quality of the film, obviously. Um, but there hasn't been a Star Wars movie released in the in the uh, so like in the Disney era. There has not been a Star Wars movie released yet that I've only seen once in the theater. Hmm. Um, so I'm guessing I'll probably see it more than once. Where do we sit? Is so. So most movie theaters are split into two sections, like the front section and the back section. Uh, favorite seats are about midway up the back section. Okay. We try to align ourselves in the row that's that the um, the side um, speakers are, so that we're directly in line with those, mm-hmm. and directly in the middle mm. of of that row. Um, <clears throat> Uh, I do enjoy a snack. I, I usually get a, a medium soda because a small soda is like kind of small <laughs> and a large soda is like a bucket and that's just ridiculous. <laughs> a large soda is like a fountain they bring to your table. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, we usually get a bucket of popcorn to share mm-hmm. and every now and then I'll get like, uh, I don't know, peanut butter M&Ms or uh, something like that. You yeah. know, some little candy to, to eat while I'm there. Um what was your other questions? Was that it? Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. What about your theater uh, experience? I guess your your rituals, your your miserably ritualistic theater. My theater. my first viewing will be solo. I won't go with anybody that I know because everybody that I know talks too much. 
and I want to concentrate solely on the movie. Right, right. My second experience, because there will be two, as there have been for, I don't want to say all the Star Wars movies, but all the all the Skywalker saga movies. I've seen okay. at least twice in the theater. Okay. <clears throat> and the second one will be with the family, probably uh, whenever it's convenient, like a couple days later. Um, I will sit center of the theater, similarly lined up to you, but we don't have special ones where the center speakers are kind of anchored back a little bit. They're just basically in the middle. So center seat. And if I can't get the center seat as close to the center seat as I can get, and I don't care if I'm inconveniencing someone by not giving them man space or whatever else, don't give a shit. I'll sit right in front of you, right behind you, right beside you. I'll hold your hand. I'll cup your legs. I don't give a shit. I'm sitting in the middle of the theater. And um, snacks uh, for the solo show, I will probably not get any at all because, again, I will be focused on the film. On the ones with the family, usually I get a drink and um, uh, one drink per person and one bucket of popcorn per three. Okay. Yeah. So that's how that goes. Because oh, usually it's, it's one big person and one small person and one medium person to a bucket. So it'd be like me and one of the twins and one of the babies sharing a bucket. Yeah. Um, the, re- the reason we're talking about uh, Rise of Skywalker right now is not just because tickets went on sale in certain locations, but also the final trailer for Rise of Skywalker came out. And um, I take it you you did, in fact, view this trailer? Uh, yes, and the breakdowns, and I watched it a few times, and then I watched the breakdown again. Did you watch Monday Night Football this week? I did not. Instead, because I knew I wouldn't be able to catch that, I signed up on Twitter to get the notification when it went live, and there was a link in that Twitter notification, so I went ahead and did that instead. Yeah, so we, we watched Monday Night Football. I mean, we, we're we kind of a you know football fan family. If we catch football, we're definitely going to sit our asses on the couch and watch it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we there was a decent chance we were going to watch Monday Night Football anyway. Uh, but we, it was like New England and the Jets, though. Like there was, yeah, no, it was a blowout. The Jets uh, stunk the stadium up. And, I, uh, I I don't think the Jets showed up. Yeah, no, they didn't. They they did definitely didn't score. No, it was they, like thirty three to zero or something. I think they just threw the uniforms on the field and walked away and just let it it's happen. Kind of, yeah, that's kind of what it looked like. Uh, they just let Tom Brady and his team have a, a just like a practice out there. Yeah, um, it, was, it was a friendly. It was a uh, it was, it was a, a scrimmage. scrimmage. Yeah. yeah. So, anyway, so we we made damn certain to watch. Don't Monday they Night share a stadium? The, Don't they share um, the Meadowlands or whatever? Um, the the Jets I, and the Patriots. I, I think don't, they share a stadium I don't pay in Jersey. To, I don't pay attention to the New England teams really. Mm. More of a uh, you know, Midwest, Midwest kind of guy, or, uh, or West Coast teams are the ones I pay attention. to. Yeah, I, I really only pay to pay attention to San Francisco and whoever's playing Dallas. San Francisco is beating ass this season. Well, the they've also got the easiest schedule in the fucking league. So I, like, <laughs> well, I'm, I'm happy they're so six far. and zero or whatever, but I'm not, I'm not like overjoyed because they're they're going into division games with fucking Seattle and everything else. Like it's 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 going to be, yeah. And Seattle's then, not doing too bad themselves. You can see the same thing about the Packers right now because they're five and two, I think. Yeah. This time, but they're they've had a fairly easy um, schedule so far this season, and also last week it didn't help that. Uh, the refs were playing on uh, the Packers team. Um, it was uh, there was some really, really, really bad. Call. Anyway, when did this become a sports podcast? We were started, We were geeking out over Star Wars, and suddenly we're talking about sports ball. Um, we uh, we're, we're gonna have to delete this part of the podcast because wait, 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 wait. You to- said something about editing the podcast. Fuck off. What's the story? Go ahead and Star Wars. Okay, go ahead. This, this shatters the illusion that that we're just geeks and only geeks, and we don't know anything about sports. Uh, that's wrong. I geek about geek out about football all the time. Like, not on this show. <laughs> so, that's anyway. Um. We get Jerry Rice in the show. We're gonna geek out about some fucking football. There's, oh, there's, it's not oh. gonna be a matter of, of. Are you working on getting Rice on this show? Oh God, that'd be a fucking awesome. <laughs> I should reach out. I know people that know we, people. We could probably get Joe Montana. He's not doing a lot right now. Uh, true, but I'm really more of a Steve Young guy. Yeah, but he's bit, he's he's a commentator now. He works for the NFL still. So right, but that'd be uh, I don't know. <laughs> Let's just say I, I have a Steve Young jersey. I don't have a Montana jersey. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I I started liking the 49ers as a kid because specifically because of Joe Montana. Yeah. And then uh, his protege, Steve Young, kind of uh, won my heart over after that. And then your fandom by proxy kind of was um, um, infectious. So I kept liking San Francisco for many years. Yeah. Um, and anyway. Then, and, then, and then you got with a Green Bay girl and you're like, ah, oh, fuck 49ers. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I stopped watching football for for many years because it's it's really 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 hard to to keep up with professional sports when you're overseas. Yeah, and I spent a lot of time overseas during my career, and it was just it was too much to try to keep up. So, yep. um, so I kind of defaulted back to Indianapolis Colts, root for the hometown, right? Crew, and then, um, but yeah, you're right. When uh, when uh, I started talking to Stephanie, her entire family, not just Steph, but her entire family is diehard. Green Bay Packers fans, uh, you know, generations of family from Wisconsin. Yeah. It's just in their blood and it's infectious as well. Like I'm, you know, I find myself rooting for Green Bay as well. I figure you root for the home team, whether that's your hometown or the people at home. You're always rooting for the home team. Right. Yeah. So. Uh, yep. That's, yeah, exactly. That's that. That's exactly right. Um, what else I'm rooting for is for Star Wars to be amazing. <laughs> Oh my god! If it's not, dude. Okay did did you have an emotional reaction to this this final trailer for Rise of Skywalker? <sighs> I did. Like, I'm excited to watch it. I was. I, I didn't like. It didn't sadden me that the saga is coming to an end. It almost gave me sort of a sense of relief. Um, but. Some of the imagery is reminiscent of things that I've only heard about because I haven't watched all the other shows. Okay. Like the, at one point it shows a picture of what could be, uh, the throne of, um, uh, Palpatine. Yep. Yeah. Um, I guess, what is he? Darth Sidious. Yep. Uh, th- there's the images of things that they've alluded to in, in the TV shows and things like that, that they, that haven't been a direct part of the movie, you know, the, the trilogy or the, the, yeah, the trilogy of trilogy movies. Um, but more than any other preview that I've seen recently, it has me excited to watch the movie. Cause a lot of this footage is brand new. There's, there's parts of it that have been alluded to in other previews, but this is really mostly brand new footage. Mm-hmm. And it's still only and and this is this is part that gets me. It's only like a minute and a half long. It's not a long trailer. Uh, no, 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 no. It's a little over two minutes. Okay, but still, it's not a long trailer. Yeah. The sure. movie. The movie is two hundred and thirty three minutes long. Yep. The longest Star Wars movie to date. Two hundred and thirty three minutes is over three hours. I am thrilled. <laughs> I, it's it's it, almost a four hour movie. No, it's not that long. I think you have that. I think you have that number wrong. Actually, it is the longest Star Wars movie to date. Uh, however, I don't think that is in fact the doing uh le- over oh, both uh, yeah. <laughs> racing to the answer on the on the Google here. Um, I, th- I think you're. I think it's more like two and a half hours. If I remember correctly, this makes for uh, so it's it's actually it's 155 minutes, which oh. is see I was close to it's so two and a half hours. Yeah, two hours and 35 minutes, right? Yeah, but I mean, uh, like 10 minutes of that is credits, so two hours yeah. and 25 minutes. It needs to be a long movie. I'm thrilled to to know that it's the longest one. Um, it's got a lot of things to wrap up, a lot of questions to answer. Um, I am I am beyond excited for this movie, and the reason I asked about an emotional reaction, I had an emotional reaction. I've seen this this trailer probably thirty times at this point, mm-hmm. and it still tugs at me no matter how many times I watch it. At the end of the trailer, uh, because like one of the themes in the trailers is that you know it's Ray's time. Mm-hmm. It, this is her battle, and well, and that even that's up, up to interpretation because of the way that it's framed. 
Well, right. And then, then another theme is that, that things are coming to an end. This is the, you know, this is the final thing, right? So this is, this is the last everything, right? <clears throat> and then at the end of the trailer, you hear Luke Skywalker say, the force will be with you. And then Carrie Fisher comes and then in. You, with yeah. And then you hear Princess Leia say, always. always. Yeah. And holy shit. Saying that, I just, I just grew hair on my arms, I think, because of the, just the, the thrilling excitement and the, just the emotional yeah. resonance that that has for me. I, I mean, I, the, the original movie came out the year you and I were born mm -hmm. and it has literally been a part of our, our, our collective uh, conscious. Yeah. Like it's, we're the same age, like star Wars and, and you and I are the same age. So we have us and star Wars have grown up together and it's been, um, I don't know, such a huge, important part of, of especially my youth, but has continued into my adulthood and, passing it on to my kids and my kids love star Wars. And it's this, my life would be different if star Wars did not exist. And Here, here's so, a, here, here's a fun fact for you. Star Wars mm -hmm. actually separates you and I. Okay. It was originally released on May 25th, 1977. So I oh, yep. am a month and a half older than star Wars. And you are about a week younger <laughs> well, I, I no, I know about a no, no, no. It's about a month. It's yeah, about a month and, not month June. It's July. So almost a month and a half. Yeah, yeah. So it, it almost yep. evenly splits our our actual birthdays. Yep, yep. Um, so yeah, May nineteen nineteen seventy seven. Almost said ninety seven. Jesus. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, dude, there's student F sixteen pilots that were born in nineteen ninety seven. It what. <laughs> What the fuck? We were already in the Air Force, like for a minute. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, yeah, dude. It's this is going to be an emotional event for me. I think there's very, very little chance that I'm not going to cry at least once during this movie in the theater. Um, first watching, I probably will not, because again, I get focused. I get very centered. I'm just absorbing. I'm not even fully processing. I'm just absorbing. Oh, see, I get emotionally involved, especially the first time because it's it's being presented to me new, and I am at 100 percent focused, but also like my emotions are also focused. Right. Well, you're a Cancer. I'm an Aries. It's like we shove ours down. You oh, live in yours because science. Well, I mean, science ish. <laughs> <laughs> Callbacks. <laughs> Um, yeah, dude, yeah. like I, I'm, I'm, in fact, I'm, I might even ball like a baby. Um, I know, I know Steph is, is, she's definitely gonna, gonna cry and it's, oh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a trip. And I just, um, I, you know, when I said that we were going to talk about Star Wars for our main topic, mm -hmm. I thought we we're going to go in a different direction with this about how. Um, I've already developed a, a couple of theories about uh, why Palpatine is showing up in the trailer and mm -hmm. stuff like that. A lot of it reliant on the animated series. Uh, Correct. Uh, content. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. And which I know. In series that, with a plural thing at the end. Right. And I know for sure it's not going to go there because it's going to be way too complex and also rely too much on secondary canon stuff. So right. I'm not even going to touch on that stuff. It was just a fun exercise to try to think of of a story that could come out of what we've seen so far. Um, but it was interesting to see how this conversation actually turned into more of a, like what star Wars actually means to us and yeah. how, how we feel about it. And I'm satisfied with that. I cannot freaking wait to see this movie. I can't wait to experience it and everything around it. And also I can't wait to see how much money we make on it in the movie draft. <laughs> it's going to be ridiculous. I think we're going um, over a billion dollars again. <laughs> We we uh, we need to we, well we need to time our first viewings as close as possible. Like we shouldn't have our first viewing hours uh, apart. Oh, like uh, one of us enters the theater while the other one is still 
in the theater for their first viewing. Yeah, something along those lines to where it's not, you know, there's not a huge gap in between. If we can't get, a, you know, a first showing tickets, we need to make sure we get very close. That way we can call each other and talk about it immediately after. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so down. So We might even do a, depending on the time of it, we might even do like a special, like, it, yeah. go live. <laughs> Spoilers. Yeah. Uh, do, do not... Do not watch this on Twitch. Unless <laughs> well, that'll be half of Twitch that day. Yeah, that'll be half of Twitch that day anyway. Yeah, that's true. That's um, true. Well, I mean, let us know how you're thinking about the Star Wars movies and the franchise and what it means to you. Podcast at RitualMisery.com. Oh, yeah. We would love to read your emails on the show. And if you have something, uh, you know, some beef with me, you want to you tell me about how I was wrong about something I said during the show. Um, RM underscore Del Noche on Twitter. Come at me. Um, you won't. No balls. Wow. <laughs> wow that's, that might be the feistiest thing you've ever said in public. <laughs> it might actually be. <laughs> While <Well>, sober. <laughs> Who's sober? Yeah. Oh, wait. Well, soberish. Yeah, yeah, ish, exactly. Yeah, I've only had like a beer and some change. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Ethan Kane. Don't come at me, bro. <laughs> um, say wonderful things about our show on Twitter at Ritual Misery. And join the conversation on our Discord, bit.ly slash RMP Discord. Yeah, you can find links to all of the stuff that we've got going on over at ritualmisery.com. Yep, and we are live every Thursday at 7 p.m. ish Pacific time at diamondclub.tv and twitch.tv slash ritual misery. Yes, and I want to say thank you very much to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music. Thank you for listening for Kent, for me, and for you. This has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. <laughs> See ya. Club hopes you have enjoyed this broker. <laughs> R-I-T-U-A-L-M-I-S-E-L-Y. I was over here dancing in my seat with the R I T U A L M I S E R Y. <laughs>